Hello friends and welcome. Today we're going to do some quick math on the Black Grimoire Warlock's new facet or one of them. It is similar to Witch Doctor's Grigri, which we covered recently. So if you haven't checked that out, feel free to, you don't have to, but a lot of the concepts will apply here. But the conclusion I think is a little bit different because of the way these items scale. The Black Grimoire starts with one charge and you gain a charge every time you get a kill or assist. It is a one-time use item and when you consume it for every charge you have, you get 250 XP. There is a cooldown period on it when it starts so that you can't like uh, spawn into the game, go get a triple kill with your team, and then you go into the lane like level three or four or something. That would be a little bit too broken. So you can't use it until uh, a few minutes into the game, but then after that, you get to choose whenever you're going to consume it. First, let's cover what it would take to farm up the gold or XP that these items give you if you didn't have them because you've already consumed it or maybe you picked a different facet in the case of Warlock. So we're gonna use lane creeps at 15 minutes. They do scale up as time goes on, but this is around the time when we would have consumed the Grigri in theory. So I wanted that for the more direct comparison to the Grimoire. For the Grigri, it's 20 GPM. That is the actual new gold that is being generated for you. The death cost saving like adds more to it. It's a little harder to get into that, but in the case of a good game where you're not even dying very much, the death cost savings is doing nothing for you. So let's focus on the 20 GPM being generated that's 100 gold every five minutes. And inevitably, you will have time where you're walking through the jungle, you got the little monkey cosmetic on your back, so you throw a coconut at the hard camp, bop, 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 you know, boom, 100 gold, you're good for the next five minutes. You farm one creep wave, you're good for like the next eight minutes. The Grimoire is gonna give us 250 XP per charge. So in terms of lane creeps, that is one creep wave, or maybe about two jungle camps. So the question is, how many kills and assists are we going to get in the game? And if we compare it to the Grigri, like eight minutes, I just need one creep wave to make up the 20 GPM. Are we only getting one killer assist in eight minutes? Like some games are really slow sometimes, right? But probably not. Like let's put it at a conservative three kills or assists we participated in, we got three charges. You need to farm three creep waves or like six jungle camps, depending like which ones you pick, right? That's a lot more farming and it sometimes does happen, but it's also farm you kind of have to take from your cores, from the other people on your team, right? And depending how many kills and assists, that number is just climbing, right? Maybe it's a very kill heavy game. Maybe you picked up like 10 charges in that time. How much farming do you need to do to make that up? To summarize all that, I think it's a lot easier to live without the gold that the Grigri gives you than it is to live without the XP that the Grimoire gives you. So based on that, we are currently more incentivized to hold the Grimoire for longer compared to the Grigri. Now, at some point you are going to consume the Grimoire charges. And I think the idea here, again, this is all theoretical, relatively theoretical because it's a new patch. The idea is that you're gonna get a burst of XP and you can hit some kind of level timing much faster than you usually would. So I thought it would help us to visualize some potential power spikes so here's a table of the XP you need to level up. If you've never seen it laid out, you start with zero XP after gaining 240 XP, you reach level two. So now your total XP is like 240. Now you need 400. Now you're at 640 total and level three, so on, so forth. You get the idea. So if we think about some potential power spikes based on levels, we can highlight talents. The talent tree might change in the future, but it's at 10, 15, 20, 25. And if there's a particularly strong talent that we're interested in, then that might be something we want to aim for to use the Grimoire to hit that talent. There's of course the ultimate at level six, 12 and 18. The ultimate is a big part of Warlock's team fight. So the stronger your ult, the better. Beyond that, we could go more into like the skill build. And right now people are trying some different skill builds. So I can't say what the best one is, but like in theory, in this case, for example, if you did something like this, then level eight could be considered a power spike because that's when we get four points in upheaval. Or if you were doing a different build, like skipping shadow word, maxing fatal bond and upheaval, and then taking the ultimate, then that means at level nine, you would have four points in both of these abilities that could also be a power spike. So depending on your build, hitting that fourth ability point in one of your skills is usually relatively strong. Some skill points we don't care about, like level 17 doesn't really give us anything because we've already maxed out our abilities. And yeah, you could start getting into like the two plus two attributes, but it's like not so big, right? And in the same way, like after we get our third point and our ultimate, there are the talents, but in between that, it's just the attributes, which are like nice, but they're not that big of a deal. After 25, like once you get to 27, 28, 29, 30, you start getting the talents, but I think that's like really late. Most games don't go there, so I'm not really gonna like focus on it. So with all that in mind, there's a couple power spikes that I think could be interesting to make the sudden jump up to. So for example, you hit level 12, you have 18 charges, 
you consume the item, you jump up to level 15. This means we have level two alt, and we can now take the talent for plus 10 upheaval attack speed. That means our golems are stronger and they have better attack speed, and all our teammates are also stronger or anyone in the upheaval, right? So if we are doing well as we enter that mid game, we can now win a big fight and maybe take a bunch of objectives with this combo. 18 charges is a little high, I kind of think, at level 12. So that might be the hard part, but I mean, I've played pub games, you guys have played pub games. Some games go like that. It's just a slaughter, right? So it's technically possible. If you don't have 18 charges, I mean, it's not that big of a deal, right? Just like, okay, level 13, you have like 12 ish charges, boom, that gets you close to level 15, right? It's still like a similar concept, but just so you guys know, I rounded up to make sure like you would definitely hit it, but 18 charges to go from 12 to 15. Similar idea, but for a later level, you hit level 15, so you take the 10 upheaval attack speed. Then if you have 21 charges, you could jump straight to level 18 to get your level three ultimate. I think it's probably a little easier to have 21 charges at level 15 compared to 18 charges at 12 minutes, just because there's uh, several minutes between that where more fights could happen. You could pick up more charges. Again, if you don't quite have that amount, no big deal. Just wait a little bit. Uh, hold the item for a little longer, probably hit like level 16. See if you pick up any more charges in that time. If you don't, whatever, consume them, boom, get to 18. You could aim for 17 charges at level 18, which I think is probably the most reasonable thing on this so far. Uh, that would jump you straight to 20. And now you have your level three ultimate plus one of these talents, which this one's new, maybe it'll catch on, but right now summons a golem on death is kind of the big one to get. And so you would now just have a stronger golem at that point. And we're reaching like at the time a warlock is level 20, we're reaching the point where one big fight could determine the game. So having that power spike could be a pretty big deal. So these three to me seem the most interesting to aim for earlier or later is possible, but it's not as interesting to me. So here's why. Here's how much XP you get for a kill in Dota 2. I know this is all a little bit messy, but the equation essentially comes down to the amount of XP the hero you killed has, plus any bonus they get or you get from any kill streaks they have, and then divide that by the number of heroes involved in the kill. To summarize this whole table without you really needing to think about it, in the early game, the XP from the charge is worth more than the XP you get from the kill in most situations. But the later the game goes on, the XP you get from the kill is worth more to a lot more than the charge XP. In the early game, you're probably picking up like 100 to 200 XP for a kill. So the Black Grimoire charge giving you an extra 250 is more than doubling the amount of XP you would get. Compare that to the late game though, like you kill a, a high level carry, they had a kill streak going, you could easily be picking up a thousand XP or more for yourself. At that point, the Grimoire charge is like a fourth bonus, which is still nice, don't get me wrong, but balance that out with how hard is it to kill heroes in the late game, which if you die too early, you don't even get an assist, right? Or maybe they get away, you don't get anything, you don't get a charge, you don't get gold, any of that stuff. So having a Solar Crest might have allowed your carry to kill the enemy carry and consider that Warlock is a team fighter. So we're not talking about like individual pickoffs, so we're talking about like we killed four heroes or we got picked off right at the start and got nothing. So that's why in the late game, I just think it's not gonna be worth it to hold the Grimoire when we compare like what items we're gonna have to not have in our inventory to be able to hold the Grimoire. In the early game, and I, I think especially if you're having a rough game, making sure you hit at least level six at a decent time could be a good use of the Grimoire. Most games, I don't think it's that hard to hit six at a decent time. So then the question is like, is it that big a deal to jump up from like, six to seven from seven to eight right yeah another skill point but i feel that warlock's abilities in the early game as long as you have like some points in them they do what they need to i i personally you can feel free to disagree on this point but like i personally do not feel a massive difference from like ooh, the third to the fourth point in fatal bond like totally changed it right Oh, the third to the fourth point in upheaval, like massive game changer. Yes, it will matter in some cases, but I think like the three points is enough to, you know, do okay in most fights and be able to hold the grimoire to keep picking up charges for longer in the game. And I think the jump between talents to the next level of ultimates, 
right? I think these power spikes are more significant. Now, what about the issue of slot efficiency that Witch Doctor had? Well, Warlock is a tankier hero by default, just a little bit, but every little bit matters for a support and he has longer cast ranges. That means he is less likely to need items to help him do his job in the early game, and he scales better in the mid to late game, so he's more likely to buy more expensive items that consolidate into a single slot, like Agonims or Refresher, and still be able to do his job. For example, at like level six, this is our cast range, right? We can hit things from so far away, whereas Witch Doctor, his stun is much shorter range, he has to get closer, his ultimate is a shorter range, and... Like, if a Witch Doctor gets killed before he can get, like, a good duration ultimate off, that is much worse than Warlock, who already cast Fatal Bonds and his ultimate from further back, and now he's can channeling, like, Upheaval. And Upheaval's really good, don't get me wrong. Don't I know Warlock spammers are already time, like, it's so good, it's better than Witch Doctor. I, you know, I get it, but, like, if this gets canceled at some point, it's not as big of a deal if you've already got, like, Fatal Bonds and your ult off. And that's why Witch Doctor has to invest more in things like uh, Shadow Amulet, Glimmer Cape, Ghost Scepter, maybe a Blink Dagger to pick the best spot, right? These are cheaper items that then fill up your slots faster compared to Warlock who like, okay, let's put this in here. Let's get him a neutral item. And then, you know, we're probably getting like Arcane Wand. Maybe we're gonna get a Shard. We're carrying Wards because we're good, right? Maybe you need Detection. So now we have like one more slot to work with. Yes, you can do things like Force Staff, Solar Crest. These are all good items. They're also like, again, single slot, right? And if you can work around with this, you could still keep this for longer. But if you don't need those, you will sometimes just see like, oh yeah, Aghanims, right? Just like first item. And it works for Warlock because it's so good or like Refresher really early. So it's tons of money going into a single slot. And yeah, maybe you can't be as efficient as another support could, like other supports who don't have to keep the Black Grimoire in their inventory could maybe like put more components in here. But I think the Black Grimoire is worth it. It's worth it, you know, for the XP. I believe in it. So I'm okay like doing a little bit of backpack, like swapping after I use items, I get to swap stuff in and eventually I'll finish the Ags. It'll go into a single spot. I should mention that if you're ever at the point where you think you would win or lose based on the next fight, you should just consume the Black Grimoire no matter where you are. Uh, just like every little bit counts, right? If it's a matter of losing the game, then just like, just do it, right? Put a blood grenade there, be, get as much as you can before that fight. But if you have some room, these are the power spikes I will be working at for now. If after testing it, I come up with something new and cool, I'll let you guys know. If you guys have any cool ideas, put them in the comments for other Warlock spammers to try out. But just... I, if you watch the video, that's my logic behind it. It's why I think using in the early game, like we can get more value out of it. I think the late game is not worth. So little Goldilocks midpoint right here, uh, probably towards like the mid to late game for support level. Uh, I know the, there aren't times here, but this is probably like mid to late game compared to the Gree Gree, which is like early to mid game consumed. Is it better than Champion of Goroth or when is one better than the other? Don't fully know, guys. I think Champion of Goroth will be its own video. Maybe next, let me know if you would like that. But I do think Champion of Goroth has more late game scaling potential, but it requires you to buy certain items to really get value out of it. I think Black Grimoire is more generic use and it leaves you open to build whatever you want to build. And it has a better like early to mid to late ish game timing. Whereas Champion of Goroth, I think really you need to be like mid to late game before you really see your regen start to matter. Uh, in the the golem but that will probably be a separate video so we can like focus in on that let me know if you guys are interested in that thank you for watching this one i'll see you in uh champion of goroth maybe